Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome to episode 137 of Snack Minute. Uh, we got our friend Jason Belk back with us this week, and um, we've, we've kind of heard that the uh, DevCore exam has been a little bit challenging for people. Um, so we wanted to bring Jason on to talk about his experience, about how he prepared for it, um, and what he did to, to succeed in passing it. Uh, so Jason, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, and then we'll get into it. Hi, I'm Jason Belk. I'm a senior technical advocate here in the learning certifications team. And the dev core is really massive exam, really tough, really fair, but it's something that I, I wanted to bring to the table here, share my experience. I know you guys have exposure to it as well. And I, I love learning technology. I love learning automation, but it, it, it took a lot of a lot out of me. And I, I just wanted to come here and share that experience and ho hopefully we, we can make some progress and help other people as well. This exam is now uh, four years old. I remember we launched it in February of 2020 uh, to a big celebration right before um, shutdown in the pandemic. And um, it was it was one of the harder things that I think Kareem and I've worked on in our career to actually get that, that exam across the board. Um, I will say DevNet Associate, um, there were layers to that that were challenging, but DevCore really got hard because we had to level up the game for people to say, hey, this is a professional certification and um, these are the, the things you need to know. And um, so, you know, we'll address it in different parts. Uh, so the the one of the bigger challenges of um, of hitting the all of the the elements of the uh, the dev core exam so again it's called developing applications using cisco core platforms and apis is that core platforms piece because as we all know with cisco we cover enterprise networking we cover data center we cover solution provider networking we cover security platforms and everything in between so um jason can you talk about the preparation you did for um, just learning about the api considerations for those different areas um, and then we'll get into some of the other parts and pieces around DevOps uh, as we get into the conversation. I think for me specifically, the the core applications was the most difficult part because I, I played around with Ansible. I'd done configuration management. I, you know, YAML, Yang, a lot of these other things that are network, you know, just kind of things that you learn as you're progressing your networking career were, were things that I, I just gotten comfortable with and even taught others on. But when it comes to learning the different specific applications, you know, you have InterSight, you have WebEx Teams, you have Catalyst Center, you, you, have, you have all these APIs, each one of them has their own ecosystem of expectations. And also for you as a learner, like it's not like you just have a, a Catalyst Center sitting under your desk that you're going to fire up and, and, and play around with. Um, so you need both be able to understand what these do, what, what the APIs are providing in terms of those functionality, and then getting that hands-on experience to be able to understand that. So for, for me, that looked like a mixture of, for stuff that I could spin up locally, yes, I, I'd spin, spin up locally, but for those larger applications that I was just discussing, we have you know the DevNet sandboxes as well as Cisco U has built-in lab experience as well. So for between those two components, you know, using Postman to call the APIs and then going through the documentation as well as the Cisco press book and all those resources I was just discussing, like really, I think just, playing around with all of those different APIs lots and lots of times, you know, building your own, maybe a little Python apps that kind of stitch things together. I, I think a, a lot of those components really, I didn't expect to, to need as much hands-on experience just because of the <laughs> scope of, of the test. Usually when you see a test like this that covers that many products, uh, the expectation is at an, at an information level that's more high level. Like, oh yeah, I, I know what Catalyst Center can do. It can do, you know, software image management, it can do assurance, these different components. But as soon as you're like, okay, now what's what's the API path? And how do I build a Python application that's calling this, integrating that in with my other components? I think that's that's just taking it to the next level where um, even when I was going, I'd been going for my CCNP early in my career, I felt like the jump between CCNA and CCNP was not the same as, you know, a dev associate to dev professional, where this is really calling in a lot more contextual information and not a knock against one or the other. It's just if you've gone down the CCNA and CCNP route, I think just knowing that there's a lot more difficulty here and also just taking a lot more time to play around and be comfortable with um, the long list of APIs that cover from data center to, to you know, campus branch to, um, you know, just collaboration type stuff as well. So my story is a little bit different. We took the exam prior to prior to the shutdown and we both passed it, Matt. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I thought this past December that 
I'm cool enough to go be able to just take it and pass it again. Without <laughs> but, you know, the revision of the exam, and we've been talking about how we revise the exam, update them um, to make sure they match Cisco and the industry today. It was a completely different test than what we actually worked on. And so I, I did not pass that uh, initially <laughs> in December. And so um, what, I, what I realized, though, is taking the test, and the reason why it's super fair is everything that you need on in order to be able to answer the question is there in the question stem itself, right? And so do you need to memorize the API endpoints? No, absolutely not. Do you need to understand how they work for the different platforms that Cisco has to offer as well as the different protocols? Sure, right? But, and, but on the same account, it's a, it's a professional level exam and it's a core exam to getting your DevNet expert right, which is your CCIE yeah. level, right? And so it's as expected. You you got to understand all of this. You got to be able to pass the dev core because once you hit the DevNet expert, it's a different ball game, right? So it's it's kind of, it makes sense why why the learning and certification group did it this way um, because it's it's kind of a, that door that once you pass, you're you're ready for the, the professional, the, the expert stuff. So Jason, just quickly here, tell us what was your strategy going into into this? Yeah, and and, and I I forgot to mention I I, di I didn't pass on my first attempt either. So I, I just wanted to call that out specifically that I'm totally there with you. I I came into Christmas time because as a team for the advocates, we were like, hey, we want to go after the DevNet expert. And I was like, well, before I go for the DevNet expert, I need to get the disk dev core into my belt because I, I knew that there were technologies in there that I hadn't played with as much, that I wasn't as familiar with especially on the data center side, like just my background, <laughs> data center is not something that I, I've needed as much hands-on experience with. And so I, I'd say coming into the exam, I felt pretty well prepared before Christmas for my first attempt. And I, but I just wanted to get a feel for what the test was like. And I was pretty close. I, I, was, I was probably within 10, 15% of passing just even on my first attempt, but that's that's not good enough. And so I, I, I think for me, Preparing the first time, I went through all of the Cisco U material, you know, all the coursework. And for me, having an active learner, engaging, taking notes is really big. And so I'm not just like watching the lecture on my phone. I'm, I have, you know, VS Code out. I'm, I'm doing, using Markdown to write bullets and, and try to summarize things in my own words. So that way later I, I can refer, refer back to my notes. And so I, I'd say that that's one thing, just making sure that you have just all the raw material in your head. I mean, obviously it's too much to know all the time, but at least be going through all, all, especially all the stuff that's newer to you, depending on your background. That was really critical for me coming into that first attempt. And then I'd say coming to the second attempt, the things that really changed that is knowing, okay, these are the areas that I'm weak in and I don't need to focus on Ansible. I don't need to focus on Git. I don't need to focus on certain technologies that I'm having to use day to day. And then just have my study and have my efforts and, and have my review being focused on those topics that are more difficult. And even just being okay with memorizing certain details that are just really hard to remember um, and maybe ones that you don't use as very often. Um, so like there, there are, there are certain things within when, when you're going through, whether that's, you know, error codes or um, authentication codes. techniques. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're in the exam, there are certain questions that are, you want to get through quickly and you just want to look, okay, this, this is an error code question. I'm going to pump this out and move on to the next one or the 12 factor app. Right. You know, there, there's this, have that on the blueprint. This is not a big surprise. They're talking about the 12-factor app. And you don't want to be, be spending 10, 15, 30 seconds, two minutes remembering which what are, what are those. The, you want to be able to like walk in the test and execute on those immediately. Um, so I, I'd say that make sure you have the low-hanging fruit locked down. And for the stuff that you do need to figure out, because for me, that, that, that's really what it took down to is I'll be burning through these, you know, kind of recall questions. And, and you can look at the blueprint and see based on the, the I, keyword identifier, what, at the beginning of those words, it, on the blueprint says what level of depth you need to understand a particular topic, whether you need to identify, configure, and those words will t will hint at you at what <laughs> depth those particular topics it understands for you, expects for you to understand. And once you take the test, you get a better feel for what that looks like. And then, like you said, for the ones that you need to figure out, like for me, that that was the fun part it was like being able to like look at the code and troubleshoot and say, okay, here's where the problem is, or or here's what this is trying to solve, and these multiple choice questions kind of through process of elimination to find which one was the most correct. I want to reiterate what you just said there, Jason, for our viewers, because 
those keywords are very uh, tied to how the questions are written. Um, and the, and you, like you said, the layer of depth that they go into. So if you see a describe, that tends to be a recall question. It's conceptual. It's something that um, you don't need to know, you know, uh, actual practical application of. But if you see implement, you better understand how to implement it. Um, and I think we had maybe maybe it was even a couple of years ago, George, our, our buddy George was on and he kind of talked about how we lay out the exam so that people can focus their training. Um, and for, you know, for this particular exam and preparation for it, um, the, the breadth of knowledge is the, is the biggest challenge. Um, but it, again, is adding a layer onto the um, professional expectation. Right. So we're not just ask, asking asking. Um, network engineers uh, to do what they usually do. We're adding a layer on it saying, how do you automate this? Yeah. And that's the biggest challenge is we're expecting the underlying understanding to tie into then the automation practice that goes along with it. And um, I was always proud of this exam. It's it's really exciting. I'd be <laughs> I'd be interested to see if I could have passed it. <laughs> no, the, the learning search team's done a great job maintaining it. And, and one, one thing I want to mention is that I'm even going through these materials, I there, there are just different, I'd say, software development best practices that I was generally aware of, but I think in preparing for the exam, it's kind of helped, you know, drive it home for me that these these are things that we need to be doing. And for us on our team, like we build tutorials and we're, we're publishing content on a regular basis. And we, we've built our own kind of custom code to help make that happen behind the scenes. And that's something that for our team that I'm going to try to start using some of these best practices. And one of them was building, you know, tools that basically are attached to your code. So like if, if, if you're building a repository of code and you want to have things that help make that code productive, whether that's doing API calls to a remote host or, you know, create, creating a skeleton structure for somebody who wants to add to that project. Like that's something that I'm taking for myself. Like, hey, this is something we can do to improve our, our existing process and our day-to-day -day working. Jason, tell me this. If I'm somebody that's going after the test in within a couple of weeks, what is it that you should tell me to do like the top three things I should go and do before I go attempt the, the, the certification exam? I'd say num number one, make, make sure you put in the time that you have that little hanging fruit locked down. And then number two is be very comfortable with the different authentication methods for all those different API platforms. Because at least for me, that's what kind of tricked me up on a lot of the different stuff is that they're, they're, they, some of them use passwords, some of them use tokens, tokens, they have different ways of things. And, and also just how those API, yes, you can figure some of it out, but some of you just do need to know. And then I'd say that the, the third thing is, you know, make, make sure that you're putting those schedule breaks, that you're not just burning yourself out coming into these exams. Because it is a lot of material. Like when I was going through this stuff, yeah, I... I I took an extra week of vacation over Christmas. For me, I'm not saying everyone should do this or has to do this, but like I was basically during my vacation, I was not working, but I was going, you know, waking up, normal working hours, studying all day during my vacation, then taking a break at the end of the day. I wasn't studying all night too. I was, you know, at the end of the day, watching a movie, hanging out with the family, doing stuff like that. So I'd say making sure if you're dedicating, you know, large chunks of time, making sure you're also taking the time to step away, to relax, to recharge and not, not burn yourself out too. Cause depending on, you know, how familiar or with the stuff, like I already have 10 years of experience coming into this. So it's not like I'm just walking off the street trying to figure this out for the first time. <laughs> and I'd say, make sure you're, make, make sure you're, you're pacing yourself and, and learning things at that pace that will be realistically where you are based on your experience. Well, unfortunately, Jason, that's all the time we have for this week. Um, the snackers, if you're interested in going through and taking the developing applications using Cisco core platforms and APIs or dev core, um, exam in preparation for your DevNet professional certification. Um, you know, follow, follow the guides that Jason has given you and check out the Cisco U training, check out the, the uh, te test exams, check out the books. Um, it's all in support of um, getting you prepared for your examination and that certification. Jason, thank you for your insight into this. And Snackers, yes. we will see you next week. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, guys.